The more you reveal your pain, the more people may want to hurt you. Although it doesn't always happen, it is common for some to take pleasure in seeing you suffer or even contribute to it happening or worsening. This behavior of sadism and envy, unfortunately, is present in many and can indeed hinder your personal growth in various areas of life, whether at work, in a circle of friends, or even in the family. Therefore, learning not to show your weak points can become your strength. Imagine yourself as a tree in the midst of a storm. The leaves may flutter and the branches may sway, but the trunk remains solid, deeply rooted in the earth. This is the portrait of silent resilience that we will teach here. We will discuss how you can be even stronger if you show that you are not easily affected by external or internal issues. Each challenge teaches you to be like the tree. By acting as if nothing bothers you, you are not denying the storm, but choosing not to let the rain soak you and the wind knock you down. You will learn to be the master of your own fate, firm, strong, and serene in a sea of chaos. In this video, we will discuss 18 Stoic principles of Epictetus, a great and renowned philosopher you have probably already heard of. Additionally, I invite you to self-knowledge, where strength does not come from the noise of thunder but from the silence of the light that illuminates the path. Therefore, in the next few minutes, focus on the content and not on daily distractions. Let's go. Principle number one. Listen twice as much as you speak. Have you ever thought about why nature gave us two ears but only one mouth? According to Epictetus, there is no error or coincidence in this but rather a clear purpose behind this reality, not to fall in love with our own voice as much as we are called to fall in love with the voice of others. It is by learning from others that we advance in life, not by repeating our own speech over and over again. So from today, Start paying more attention to what people around you say, and less to what you have been upholding until now. Principle number two, always expect the worst. One of the biggest causes of anxiety and its devastating consequences is believing that unfavorable circumstances are waiting for us in the future. We fear that our children will abandon their studies, that we will be fired from work, that our spouse will confess to us that they have been having an affair with someone else and ask us for a divorce, or that something else bad will happen to us, such as going bankrupt. The problem is that one day we fear one of these problems, and the next day another, and another. The path of life, in addition to reserving good and happy parts for us, also reserves a handful of problems that are inevitable. Therefore, we live in permanent stress caused by different stimuli each day. And this is where Epictetus comes into the picture since his proposal is as drastic as it is effective. He says, think that all these things you fear so much have already happened, so what could be worse? In this way, your spirit will develop coping strategies to move forward with your head held high. Principle number three, prepare to fail because it is the only way to progress. We do the impossible so that we are not considered fools, but Epictetus has another view on this. According to his philosophy, one of the best things that can happen to you is to be considered such, as this is the way for you to really improve professionally and personally as well. The Stoic philosopher reminds us that overcoming is not the product of a spontaneous reaction, but rather the result of a long path of trial and error for it is through error that we can polish what distances us from excellence. Principle number four, be aware of the dangers of fortune. This wealth that we desire brings with it a stigma from which few people can free themselves. And it's not just about the people who will emerge from nowhere to benefit from our fortune by pretending a friendship they don't feel for us. Money has the ability to transform people and not necessarily for the better. Once we possess this highly coveted resource, we come to have something that, until then, we did not know we had. And it is from that moment that our spirit may begin to poison itself in the face of the loss of moral values. Principle number five, do not cling to a single hope. Fortunately, we are beings inclined to practice diversity. That is, there is no reason to put all our hopes in a single dream since this could be devastating if we fail in it. Therefore, 
Epictetus encourages us to pursue many dreams, as this will exponentially increase our chances of success. Principle number six. Always remember that death is waiting at the end of the road. This is not advice that calls us to pessimism, but to be aware that death is the final destination of all our actions and especially our efforts. Once we have this in mind, perhaps we will start to evaluate to what extent it is worth spending 20 years of our limited life saving to pay for a house that, as much as it weighs on us, we will not be able to take with us wherever we go once death visits us. Just as we carry in our bag those objects that we consider indispensable for our daily life, such as the phone, credit cards, and our toothbrush, it would greatly benefit us to carry a small notebook with these stoic principles. Thanks to them, we will no longer see setbacks as misfortunes nor life as eternal time we have at our disposal, but we will acquire a more realistic view of our existence and certainly make better use of our time of life. Principle number seven, true wealth lies in a contented spirit. Due to Stoicism, Epictetus had his particular conception of happiness, and we can know it through one of his famous phrases. A wise man is one who does not fret over the things he does not have, but rejoices in those he does have. This reflection is more than a thought. It is advice to learn to stop feeling afflicted by those riches that are not yet part of our life. While we allow ourselves to complain and mourn for what we lack, we lose valuable minutes of happiness in which we could thank for everything we have achieved so far, which is much more than our eyes are trained to appreciate. Thus, a rich person is above all a happy person. Principle number eight, incorporate humility into your life. If you really want to learn something, it is essential that a person learns what they believe they already know. Through this phrase, Epictetus calls us to make use of our humility, especially in the realm of learning. Going through life boasting of the pride of knowledge distances us more and more from the authentic knowledge that arises from the conviction that we are completely ignorant about what we intend to learn. In this way, we will look at everything through the eyes of a child, which harbor as much capacity for wonder as they do a desire to learn. Principle number nine, Guilt is synonymous with plague. Narrow-minded people blame others. Ordinary people blame themselves. But the wise see all guilt as foolishness. Thanks to this phrase from Epictetus, therapists nowadays have begun to approach guilt as a feeling to be eradicated from our lives. The only way to win the competition against guilt is to refuse to play with it. The problem is that it results in an easy path, since by blaming others or ourselves, we completely absolve ourselves of the responsibility to correct the mistake. Therefore, resorting to it is a temptation that is hard to escape. Only those people driven by a firm determination to overcome are capable of avoiding guilt and still manage to take responsibility for their actions. Principle number 10, make alliances with winning people. It's curious how when someone sneezes next to us, we immediately move away, invaded by the fear that they will infect us. However, we are not so cautious to avoid one of the most lethal contagions we are exposed to daily. Epictetus left us a wise piece of advice about this. Surround ourselves with people who make us want to give our best because people's behavior greatly influences our state of mind. There are people who drain our energy and ruin our day, while others leave us full of joy and vigor. Therefore, one of the smartest decisions we can make is to ally ourselves with those who bring good vibes into our lives while we say goodbye to those who have the ability to make us regret being born. Principle number 11. Never forget that your reactions forge your destiny. We should not take our reactions lightly, as they are definitely what mark our success or our failure. Epictetus was very categorical about this. He taught us that we do not have the possibility to choose what happens but how to manage it. Misfortune can fall upon any of us, but it is what we do from its arrival that will mark the difference from that moment on. For some people, a divorce means entering the world of depression and victimization. In contrast, for Epictetus, it is a golden opportunity to start on the path of self-knowledge. Remember that your life is not what happens to you, but what you do with it. 
Principle number 12. Always fulfill your duty. Each one of us has a role in society and in the world, and the sun does not need praise or enchantments to rise each morning, but it does every day, and that's final. Thus, just as every part of nature does its job, we must fulfill our obligations. If we are waiting for praise or enchantments to do our work, we are failing both the environment to which we belong and ourselves. If we know what our task is and are aware that other people depend on it, it is our moral duty to carry it out without waiting for anyone to remind us of it. Principle number 13, never fall in love with applause. Epictetus is very categorical when it comes to defining what he calls the applause of the public. Public opinion is the most dangerous of monsters, not only because it changes from one moment to the next, but also because it has the power to forge our thoughts and condition our reactions if we allow ourselves to be conquered by it. Therefore, it is much more valuable to live by and for our own criteria than for what others expect from us. Therefore, do not expect to receive a standing ovation for everything you do. Consider that your success will be more solid if it is not the product of recognition from others, but of the pleasure you feel when contemplating your achievements. Principle number 14. Do not complain. It is curious how our modern society seems determined to make complaining an everyday practice. When we are not complaining about politics, we are complaining about the weather, our partner, our job, or even our body. However, according to Epictetus, by practicing gratitude, we find the antidote to these complaints. As soon as we are thankful for what we have, there will be no room for complaints in our minds and much less in our actions. Principle number 15. There are worse things than physical pain. One of the most innovative Stoic principles of Epictetus is the one that tells us that there is something worse than physical pain. We are referring to mental pain, which is capable of limiting our lives in a much more invasive way than physical pain. While physical pain can be treated with medication, surgery, and rest, mental pain has a tendency to deepen as time goes by. Therefore, if you are going through a bad emotional moment, the best thing you can do for yourself is to seek professional help. Principle number 16. Begin your journey as soon as possible. If you aspire to lead a serene life, you should not postpone your purpose of life but start it as soon as possible. While there is still light, Epictetus tells us that time is a scarce resource that slips through our fingers and that only the wise know how to make the most of it. As much as you think you have 50 years ahead of you, the only certainty you have is the day you are living. Therefore, start your personal journey today without waiting for a more opportune moment. Principle number 17. Don't show off your problems. The person who calls themselves a Stoic is one who faces misfortune with the same countenance with which they face the days of happiness. It is not about denying pain, but about avoiding showing our wounds. By doing so, we will gain more time to look for solutions and keep away from those who will try to take advantage of our vulnerability. As much as the truth hurts, you must know that there are people who will enjoy your suffering. Therefore, try not to let them see you suffer. Principle number 18, live your truth. The last of Epictetus's principles that we present to you is nothing more and nothing less than an invitation to live according to your own principles and ideas. Perhaps this phrase will help you reflect better on it. Better to be a poor philosopher than a rich businessman. Although the second option will give you material satisfaction and recognition from others, the first option will give you the possibility to live by and for your ideas without conditions or constraints. It will be up to you to decide how to spend the last minutes of your life. If surrounded by treasures, or a feeling fulfilled for having fought for your beliefs. In a world where pain and vulnerability can often be exploited, it's crucial to build your strength and resilience. The principles we've discussed, rooted in the timeless wisdom of Epictetus, offer a pathway to not just survive, but thrive amid life's challenges. Thank you for watching the video and for staying with us until the end. We truly hope you found it valuable and insightful. Please share your thoughts and ideas in the comment section, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you soon.